Now, our next presenter, he's one of those guys who stands on a soapbox up at the domain and he talks. He's one of the, the guys at the speaker's corner. Now, he assures me he's not one of the crazy ones. On the other hand, he thinks, that's what they all say, yeah, he thinks we should take the most valuable piece of art in the world and set it on fire. So here to tell us why we need to burn the Mona Lisa, please welcome Mark Avery. Remember the story of the Empress New Clothes? A naked king gets conned into believing that he's wearing beautiful clothes that everyone can see but him. His courtiers and peasants go along with it. Everyone except for one little boy who puts up his hand to speak the truth. Buy a street directory for $30 and in 10 years it's worth nothing. In 100 years it's collectible. In 1,000 years it's an archaeological antiquity. And in 2,000 years it's a sacred religious document. <laughs> but it's just a street directory. We tend to value an item if it becomes old and rare. Consider the Mona Lisa, 500 years old, but it's faded, cracked, four coats of varnish. If Leonardo da Vinci could see it today, he'd say, why hang that painting up? That's nothing like the painting I intended you to see. But his intentions don't matter to us. We value it because it's old, it's rare, it's a da Vinci. We have that street directory mentality. If we are really, truly honest about appreciating da Vinci's genius, we would make a replica indistinguishable from the fresh one he painted 500 years ago, with the colours jumping off the canvas. We know the paints he used, we know the brush strokes he used, and we have the skill to do it. You might argue that it wouldn't be a perfect replica, but that replica would far more accurately represent da Vinci's genius and intentions than the faded, crazy old one we have now. So, why don't we? Why don't we make a replica of how it used to look, of how it should look, so that we can see what da Vinci wanted us to see? Why don't we? Because, as I say, we have that street directory mentality. We have that collectible mentality. And the Mona Lisa is the best damn collectible on the planet. The major art galleries won't agree, but they're not true art galleries. They're investment houses. I went to the admin floor of the New South Wales Art Gallery and asked a high-ranking staff member, what criteria does the gallery use to buy a painting? She told me, the gallery will buy a painting if it has been painted by a famous artist. There you go. The ga art gallery will not buy a painting if it touches your heart or nourishes your soul, but it will buy a painting if it adds prestige to the gallery and can one day be sold for a profit. That's why we find in that art gallery a canvas painted just black. A black canvas does nothing for us, but hey, someone famous painted it and it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> and how often do you go into an art gallery and find just a few scribbles, a few lines of what is obviously an unfinished work? <laughs> now, the artist didn't finish it, and if it wasn't good enough for the artist, we... <laughs> why is it good enough for us? We need to burn the Mona Lisa because it represents corruption. <laughs> the big art galleries present to us decrepit work like the Mona Lisa because it's collectible. They present to us rubbish like black canvases because it's collectible. They present to us rejected, unfinished work because it's collectible. But we shouldn't have to endure decrepit work past its use-by date or monochrome canvases or work that the artist has rejected. We don't go to an art gallery just to appreciate the paintings and the sculptures. We also go there to appreciate us. We go there to appreciate our humanity. We want to experience works of art that do touch our heart and nourish our soul. And collectibles just don't cut it. Our values have been corrupted. 
by superb marketing. We have been corrupted. When we gaze upon a jaded, faded, cracked Mona Lisa with four coats of varnish and marvel at its beauty, we need to look again. We need each and every one of us to be that little boy who would not be fooled, who would not be lied to, who put up his hand to speak the truth. Well done, Mark Avery.